So, all right, good to see you. Get hey, the, yeah, get that mic in there, hey, man. Go. Let's it's, hear it's, this it's, voice of yours. Somewhere. You know, my, my you son. You, you, you talk. I want to listen. Okay, yeah. my, my son said to me this morning, he said uh, he was talking about talking to his friends, and some of he got the things he inherited from me. Well, one of the things I got was that voice. And he proceeded to tell me how horrible my voice was. And how, oh, did he? Nice. And how he, uh... he said, whenever I come up and talk to him and he's talking to his friends online, they say, is that your brother? <laughs> he said, why? You know, you, you what? Know. so I doomed him to this voice. But he did say, you know, there oh, are... Oh, yeah, yeah. You pass things down. I mean, I, I've, yeah. uh, I have bad knees, so my son plays soccer. He's got bad knees. He had bad yeah. knees. and have to work on it. So, yeah. hey, welcome mm-hmm. to the family is all I can tell you. Yeah, it's... Um, um, Maybe he'll uh, also get my my shingles. <laughs> my, uh, oh yeah, uh, that, there's a list of things I remember. Yeah. We've gone through them. Uh, here Chronic on the ED. Show. He's just. I mean, <laughs> he's he's gonna. <laughs> yeah, there's something about that. All right, man. Well, it's good to see you. How's you your know, day going? You know, if you so had far? a learning disability yes. and erectile dysfunction, would that be LED? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. I like the joke though. I'm I'm all about the joke. So. Uh, <laughs> it's, Let's see what's going on with that other camera here. All right, so this is just our podcast, and we're just talking. And uh, which uh, this is a joke I said. I came up with one this morning. Okay. I was sitting at the court. You, your wife was there, and there were a um, um, yes, well, couple know. of other therapists. No. I don't know if you want no Wanda Schaefer or Yvette. Richardson. Yes, no, no, yes. So they were there, yes. and so I'm talking to them, and and they're all talking about how you know that. That uh, they're banning straws and that you know they're paper straws and whatnot. Oh, we talked about that last week, and yeah. You know. <laughs> Did we talk about we, that? We talked, we talked about, about a so little we, bit of something about was, was, California and the rules there. Yeah, it was, it was so right. I don't know how far we went. Well, the, uh, or they, were, connected. they were saying, like, you know, that some people even are buying straws that they carry with them. And I said, right. and, and you know, the reason that they're they're doing all this is because of you know, the damage it's doing to the to the sea and whatnot. And I said, well, okay. y- y- well, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I do, I carry, I, I decided I was going to carry a straw, you know, so I wouldn't use. But unfortunately, my straw is made out of sea turtle. <laughs> oh, and, <laughs> you know, and, and that's, and nobody, uh, <laughs> nobody seemed to appreciate. No, that I know, I, I can see why they wouldn't. Uh, but, but I uh, think that they have LED. They suffer from LED. <laughs> they LED. <laughs> yes. All right, we're gonna come. Let's end the show coming back to that. Okay. Actually, I just thought another one. Today, if it's so. dyslexia, you'd have DE. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's just. All right, that is something I don't. I don't know where we're going on there, but um, I'm moving around a little bit, but that's okay too. All right. So other than that, so you were in court today. You were dealing with uh, was, something. Was, yeah, it was. Uh, I did not do it. I don't care what everybody said. So no, it wasn't a, about you. I think I was uh, not. I am not. I'm not guilty. Part it. of being a psychologist and getting out there and seeing clients, seeing patients, they're going to end up in court, and sometimes you have to yeah, show up. It's and, also part uh, of having psychopathic deviant trends. I uh, <laughs> find myself in court a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Well, um, I hope that went well. And uh, you didn't well, make my wife mad. That was the that's well, uh, the big thing yeah. I needed to st- or tell you about because uh, well, we'll I can't hear tell about because it. I, can't, I don't think she was mad, but she did stop talking for the last hour or so and just stared. Just so stared. I don't know if that <laughs> what that is what that not, means. Not good. Not good. Okay. Well, I know there's some really tough cases out there. I know you guys see uh, uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, practice and you're seeing people have lots of difficulties, lots of issues. Um, yeah. And it's tough. It's tough to uh, kind of help. Uh, but but your job is really not necessarily to decide, but to help the court decide what what it's, happens. It's, uh, to, uh, yeah. If, it, if I were the judge, you know, I'd be a, I'd be a hanging judge. You, be a lot, <laughs> you know, yeah. be a lot of. You'd be know. yeah, like from the old western the town uh, square. There, the there town would be, square you know, thing. Like hundreds of people just cackling. Yeah. <laughs> just for That's, small offenses too. I would be. You know, I, I think we should just jaywalking should be capital that's it. oh okay you're gonna cry. you're cracking down yeah, no, on us now so yeah. um i don't know i'm glad you're not a judge <laughs> i guess that's where i'll leave it right there uh, yeah you know so, i will say this though if i if, if ever i ever go to trial that if they could find a jury of my peers good luck 
that's uh, that's going to be a trick in that finding is. a jury yeah. of your peers. That's right. Unless that's it's, right. it's going to be at the zoo. They're going to find like you know some some brain adult <laughs> chimps maybe. Or uh, how about uh, I think I'll find twelve too. That's a lot. That's a lot. Twelve orangutans <laughs> with TBI. I think that really might be a jury of my peers. <laughs> That's something, it's something like that, I'm sure. Um, yeah, let's hope you don't get in any trouble and you need a jury of mm-hmm. your peers. This is a, you know, walk the straight and narrow here as best you can, uh, okay? Yeah. Try to keep yeah. it within boundaries a little yeah. bit there. All right, so what's on your mind today, my friend? Well, we so, talked about this before. We talked about, we talked about hate. We, hate. Oh, hate, hate. That, that's that's uh, a thing. That's a big one because there's so many things happening in the news. It mm-hmm. seems to be hate everywhere we, Here's all what I'd like time. to say, though. The problem with the people you're thinking about is not that they hate, but they're not good at it. I think if we were better at hate, that um, you know, the problem with Nazis. Okay, you know, you know, you're going to have to explain right. that. Uh, the problem with in Nazis, detail, yeah. with K- the KKK, all this sort of stuff, is not that they are hate groups, but they're not very good at hate groups. That's their problem. Okay, well. Uh, let's take a minute mm-hmm. and for you to get yourself out of that hole you just dug. Because <laughs> uh, there's people out there going, what is wait, he wait, saying? What does that mean? What? I don't know. All well, right, a couple so ways I'll give you some this. time to figure that out. And, and the first one is, is the, there's a man by the name of Donald Winnicott, Donnie W., to his uh, friends and family. Uh, D.W., maybe, to, uh, he was British, so that probably closer. But Donald Winnicott. Yeah, got it. And he talks about how um, the parents have to be able to survive... The baby's hate. The mom has to survive the hate and be intact. And so the baby has to be able to take all these feelings and discharge them in such a way as that the mom can contain them. She can continue to hold said individual. And as a result of that, we become much more comfortable or to be able to do something with the intense feelings we have. Right. So we can begin to mediate with them, dance with them. We become, uh, we talked about it before, the difference between regulation and modulation. Right. right. So if you have a caregiver who can survive your hate, you're more likely to be able to modulate that as opposed to simply regulate it. And um, so from a Winnicottian perspective, the racist, the person who is... Um, who um, goes on and on about uh, about Muslims? Or um, I have a friend in Tennessee who sends these. Um, what has he said that um, um, the Democrats are commies? I'm just calling out. They're commies. That's what they are. You know, okay. um, a failure to do something with the things that you feel will result in some very um, uh, non-flexible and less adaptive ways to regulate and finding some place to discharge that, to take all your insecurities and simply place it there. That's an act of, that's one of those isms. And that is not hating in a, in a, in a, in a constructive way. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, that is not being able to do something with the things that you feel in such a way that they could be, that, um, and uh, if, if, if one is better at hating then you don't have to target minority groups. You don't have to target an other to be able to do that. You can get a better sense of what it is you need to do with the feelings you have. And that takes us back to the cat right. by the name of Wilfred Bion. Yeah, yeah. And Bion says that there's there's both positive and negative forms of knowledge, love, and hate, and faith. All four things. Okay. And that, um, and if, uh, for instance, a, a negative form of love, we know in, in, in our profession that um, you can kill with kindness. If you mm-hmm. don't set the right sort of boundaries, you can think that you're being loving, but you're actually doing the opposite. You are disempowering someone. You're generating an dependence. You are keeping them from being able to do the things they need to do to grow. Um, giving too much of yourself to the point that you hurt yourself is a negative form of love. Okay. Right? Right. Um, um, we can take um, knowledge the same way. I've, in fact, this is a concept I've always thought was really cool, this notion of um, negative K and positive K. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a wonderful study a few years back. They used Fox News, but it could go lots of ways, but it was Fox News. People who thought they knew a lot based on the information they got from Fox News when they quizzed them later actually knew much less. Okay. So that's a negative form of knowledge. I know that the Democrats are commies. That actually is something that you know in such a way that keeps you from knowing other things that you may need to know. 
Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And and the idea that it wasn't really processed uh, very much. It was a, almost a, a sort of a shallow thing. And and they wanted to kind of fit in maybe with the group. And I know there's some in group, out group kind of yeah. things you probably talk about. But but uh, yeah. yeah, that the uh, getting a little bit of information and then acting like that's it. I, I, now I know. And we want to think about this from from sort of that affect theory standpoint. Um, you are. That is an act of emotional regulation, not modulation. It feels good to know who your enemies are and to be able to point to one person or one group of people to say they're the reason the world is the way it is. It generates a, a convenient and, and palliative narrative that keeps you from knowing things you need to know. So to a degree, our symptoms, these, this form of negative hate is another form of symptom, they, they keep us from knowing something. And so when we think about positive and negative hate, um, Beyond talks about as a therapist, mm -hmm. a positive form of hate is looking at the clock and saying we have to end. That is positive hate. Every time you set a boundary, you are literally saying to some degree, right now it's all about me, screw you. And Beyond thinks we should be able to accept that, that there are moments okay. when we have to be able to say, screw you, that's about me right now. But right. And it just seems like people have this black and white view of uh, emotions in some ways. There, there's no, um, uh, it's, it's not a continuum of any sort. It's either mm -hmm. either or. Mm -hmm. And uh, that seems to get us into trouble sometimes mm -hmm. when I, mm -hmm. I think we haven't really processed that, reflect back on it, take a look at ourselves and how we're. In fact, black and white thinking, with. which if we're thinking psychoanalytically, why shouldn't we? Yes. Is, uh, <laughs> is what's called the paranoid schizoid position. And it always is an act of emotional regulation. Whenever we split, as we know folks who struggle with some, some personality disorders do, splitting is a way of, of solving the storm inside of us. You are all bad and evil. To be able to speak those words gives a momentary lapse in the turmoil that is you. It offers a clear indication and path for you to follow to, to steer you away from the things that could be sucking you in. So mm -hmm. black and white thinking always is, and that is, a, that is not a positive form of hate. Um, and I was sort of thinking about it, as we were, and I haven't really thought this through, but mm -hmm. if we were to, um, if we wanted, let's say, um, um, uh, Nazis or the KKK, if we wanted them to get better at hate, the questions they may ask themselves is, first off, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel that the world isn't fair? And if they were to start there, then coming to an easy solution, well, it's because there are these degenerate people who are different colors, skin color than me, have invaded my country. It could be, wait a minute, there are, maybe there are systemic problems that have kept me from being able to make my potential, that there are things are rigged in a fashion, or there have been a series of things out of my control that I need to be able to address and understand so that I might be able to advance, as opposed to falling off back on this negative hate. They, they're not drawing a boundary that allows them to self-care. They're simply expelling and projecting into someone else the very things they should own. And that, that's, that, that's that trap. They're not good at hate at all. Okay. They're, they're lousy at it. Well, it, it, that, that's a very different way to look at it. So I'm glad you, you kind mm -hmm. of brought that up. And the issue that it, it, to me is that you, and it gets back to a lot of things that we've said in, in various <laughs> issues of really that self-awareness and that reflection and then taking time to really to pause and really think what's going on and why am I feeling in this mm -hmm. way and what's going on mm -hmm. um, that we don't often do. It's more reactive. And also, I think what what we talked about too is projection. Mm -hmm. It seems like that's just an easy go-to yeah. uh, defense mechanisms to hate others. I'm okay on this side. Everybody else, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. And it's it is remarkably effective. I, th I think I may have used this as an example here before, but I was uh, at one of these leadership things not long ago, and I I came into the room, and they assigned you seats. This is at the university. Right. And they I go do and I sit down on my what now? They do that a lot at universities. <laughs> assigned so, seats. So I'm suddenly I'm, I'm sitting <laughs> and I, I look around and I see everybody around me in their tables. They seem to be talking. Right. And no one's talking to me at my table. Oh. And so I'm like, you know what? I looked at the table. Oh, maybe it's 
you know, they sent me with a lame bunch of people <laughs> over there. Those are the cool people. Over there. Right. Look people at the, how, much, how much fun the yeah, cool so people are. And yeah, I'm here with these losers. They're, they're losers. <laughs> you know, and that is a, that is from a defensive perspective. That is a, I was, I was experiencing some emotional dysregulation. I had been moved outside of my euthymic window and the act of projection was a, um, a, a quick and reflexive act of homeostasis. The mm -hmm. problem is not me. I don't have to address this. Right, right. They suck. Over there's better. Okay. And and, and, and there's some relief in that momentarily. <laughs> it, it, at least it's some point. Well, yeah. I well, guess. And, and so you. But uh, so I, I sit there. I think. Okay. Well, hold on a second. Something's going on here. You know. You're right. Everybody else is talking. Uh -huh. And then I realize, I have my back turned to my people at my table. My chair is facing this way. Okay. And they're carrying okay. on the conversation. So I turn my tet chair to them, and then suddenly we all begin to oh, talk. Look, that's a good and I'm like, here. they're not actually so bad. And I'm like, wait a minute. And but for a brief moment, the solution I came up with, which you know, short term had a wonderful short term benefit, because mm -hmm. I but it kept me from suffering in a productive way. And I think part of the key to to positive hate is there has to be a suffering. There has to be some understanding of what are these intense feelings welling inside of you. And that requires you, you have to get burnt a little. You have to be able to face that fire to some degree as opposed to simply projecting it into someone else, which is so reflexive and so easy to do. It's easy to do. I'm I'm with you on that. I don't think people have a lot of practice at that. I mean, where, where else do you go to learn those kind of things? I mean, basically... Uh, yeah. It takes a lot of practice to sort of, and someone to maybe to bounce some ideas off of, and well, maybe therapy. That's why that's therapy what, is working, I guess, for a lot of people. See, I, think, I like what you're doing there because I, I, I need money. Um, but well, therapy is one because part of what happens in, in, in therapy, and there are different kinds of therapies, um, uh, therapies that are maybe a bit more process focused. Not only can you get someone to be open and own the things they're feeling. You know, there are moments when you may hate your therapist or what often happens in therapy is is the thing that has to be owned is to be aware of just what sort of tensions arise in any social interaction. And the more the more common one is to feel less than. It's I think okay. you're less likely to hate your therapist and to feel, ah, oh, man, I wish I was as smart as they were or man, mm -hmm. I had a patient the other day say to me, you know, um, I bet everybody and your family has just, you know, healthy and balanced and everything. You know, you did that, I bet that's the just case. This idealized yeah, view. Yeah, right. Could be, it's you know. Yeah, right. And you know, I, I could have. Uh, well, first off, I could have shown the MMPI for most folks in my family and said, "Well, actually, right. I have some data set to disprove that." <laughs> but what was important at that moment is to be able to say what they needed to say, but then to explore. Well, what was going on with you when that when you said that? And then they mm -hmm. were able to say, "Well." You seem to have an answer for the things that bother me. And if I can't answer them, it must be there's something wrong with me. Right. You know, and I don't know. So right. That must be there's something wrong with me. Okay. And so that All begins right. a discussion of, well, let's, let's think about that. You know, what, what, and, and, and that narrative was far older than that moment, that they are often disempowered in moments of social interaction in such a way that there are emotional needs and attachment connections that get thwarted and they and they uh, this individual particularly would react through um, intermittent illegal drug use okay you know they would okay. they would find ways to they often feel a sense of we can talk about that euthymic window of emotional dysregulation that's fairly constant because they often find themselves in this position. Everybody else around me has it together, and I don't. Right. And they don't even really know why they're, you know, buying Xanaxes from folks and downing them all the time. But they do. And if we get them to be more aware of, and that requires them to be to suffer a little, that they are suffering to maybe have some understanding what that suffering is and what it might mean, then they can answer it differently. Right. Well, I was thinking, too, that uh, the, especially when you mentioned social uh, situations and interactions, that sometimes this is like a, a, there's a behavioral side to it as well because you 
practice something, that's what you do in those situations, and the new situation is going to bring up those same kinds of feelings as well. So you've you've really learned this over a period of time and reinforced it in mm. some ways. And it and it, it's reinforced. We have to say in the in, in the mind of the biz, it causes the cause. So often, folks who are so afraid of being rejected will do the very behaviors that generates rejection. And so they're caught in this circle. Right, and that's where this notion of, sur- yeah. of, of, of suffering, you know. In fact, it, if we get back with hate, um, if, if you have a, a, a racial minority that you suddenly feel is somehow degenerate and destroying everything that you love, um, you can scan the environment and find examples of someone who is worthy of your hate. Because there is literally no group of people on the planet that don't have a, a percentage of people in them that suck. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so it's yes. it literally, in fact, <laughs> it would be a racist, it would be a, uh, it would be an, uh, it would, it would be a racist statement to say that all, uh, let's, Samoans, let's say Samoans. Right, right. That all Samoans suck. But it would also be racist to say all Samoans are saint. Because both of those are are right. are literally uh, um, pigeonholing and 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 in that projective sort of split place we don't want to be. Right. But so it often causes the cause. You can get stuck in these negative hate loops, and they self fulfill themselves. And they're like it's like um, it, it it's like some sort of um, r- r- hate riptide, right. and. Um, <laughs> Ultimately, the person that really drowns is the individual caught in it. They are stuck. They cannot grow. They are right. the suffering they feel never finds an outlet or comes to the surface in such a way that they can do something with it. They're trapped by it. Well, it's this idea <clears throat> that you don't question things. You just accept and move on. And I think a lot of people want so much to be in the group and be in the tribe and talk about tribalism so much these days. That uh, that's the, that's where they go immediately, and there's this, that's safe a safe moment anyway. And they don't take the time to really look. Do I really hate this person? What is this about? Question their own uh, beliefs in some ways. Well, and, and 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 think about how that process requires. We talked in uh, in here about the notion of assimilation versus accommodation. And in assimilation, your maps don't necessarily change. You, your the information you take just sort of confirms the things you already know. And in some way, that's a little like a negative K sort of place to be. Uh, and an act of accommodation, though, again, there's a, I think I mentioned it last time, there's a Greek philosopher who's saying is all learning is suffering. Mm-hmm. And to accommodate requires you have to feel some things that you may not be comfortable feeling. If my, in my example of mm-hmm. sitting at the table at the, you know, I had to start thinking, wait a minute, what if the people beside me don't suck? For a brief moment, I had to be, the, so maybe I suck. Yes. Or, or I could say, wait a minute, okay, maybe they don't suck, I don't suck, so I'm sort of oscillating in that paranoid schizoid position. I'm either projecting all the good, all the bad <laughs> out to them, or then I, all the good goes out from me. And so there's this moment of seesawing, and there's a moment to say, wait a minute, my suffering may be telling me something. And what is it telling yeah. me? Right now I'm uncomfortable, I feel lonely, and I feel rejected. What could that be about? And then I, I notice wait a minute, my back is turned. How could they possibly? If the message I'm sending to them is, I don't, you know, I don't want to talk to you. And so right. when I turned it around and said, oh, you know. Hey, hey oh, wait. Suddenly <laughs> they, there, there was a, and, and, and that is the, the loop. That is, and um, I was at, um, I was at a, uh, I don't know if you know the um, uh, uh, French, uh, a death metal band Gojira. Uh, no, but uh, uh, no, not on my but, <laughs> list um, of I, I've seen albums a couple times. at this point. I, I, they're they're they're, a, they're a, the French death metal band, and um, yeah. I saw them in in Atlanta uh, a while back. I've seen them a couple times, and um, in the middle of a concert, the um, the lead singer Gojira sort of raises his fists in the sky and he points down to the mosh pit and say, "Bring me your hate." This is the place for your hate. Then he screams it. Wow. And it's interesting because, in a way, that seems, in the context, there was an affirmation in this. Mm-hmm. And when we think about this, and if you look at some developmental infant studies, if we look at the first thing we could see that, that would, um, what is the zero point for burgeoning hate? And maybe it is the infant 
whose um, whose diaper has not been changed, the infant who um, who has a rash, the infant whose hunger has gone on a few seconds too long, and so what happens there is this this emotional dysregulation that's that uh, and then there is this scream and this cry. It's a mm-hmm. ah mm-hmm. right, and this is part of human development, and how the environment answers it is going to be important. Right. Um, there is the potential for an empowerment. Um, the famous Clash lyric, anger can be power if you know that you can use it. Um, there is something there that if the environment, the maternal object, the holding environment, whatever it is, meets that baby at that point, something something can happen. And in this mosh pit in Atlanta, these are all people who have, um, it, it is impossible to go throughout your day without experiencing some form. Uh, we no longer have wet diapers. We no longer necessarily have to wait. Well, we often have to wait to get the food we want. All the frustrations that build up in a normal day or a normal week or whatever, mm-hmm. they have an outlet in this mosh pit. They have an outlet in this music. There is a chance to, as a group of people, to rage against the world that hasn't changed your diaper yet. And I think that's the essence of a heavy metal concert. A group of people all together who are in direct connection with a memory of not having their diaper changed immediately. Wow, that that changes uh, wanting to go to a concert uh, that's right it's now. A. I'm thinking, and there, uh, there is a metal band that's called Hate too. I think they do there, the there, same. There is a band, there's, the there's one called Hate Breed, and there's okay. also one called Hate Beak, which is a um, a death metal band fronted by a parrot. Okay, no, that, no, <laughs> that's that's not that's that not true. true. You it were just true. saying that. I, and I don't. You. If you look it up, hate me. We, we have to Google that now. Hate me. In fact, if you want. <laughs> okay, no, no. I, I, I we're just going to let that go. I can. Uh, we'll let that go. We'll do this after after uh, it's over. We're going to uh, go mm-hmm. look at that. So the parrot comes out as the front man I, for I the have band. Hold on a second. Hold okay. I, 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 I right. will j- just a brief moment of some hate beak. Hold on. I, the world needs Did to know. Did you say hate beak? Hate beak. Okay. Hate hate beak is a thing. Let's see. Hold on. There is There's something about this is not right. And I I mean I know it reinforces your uh, your theory. Hate about beak live. They have a live. Album. Okay. They, here we go. Oh, I here's, don't have that one. I need to. Uh, I need, here we go. We need to get that. Bird seeds of vengeance. So okay. These guys are having a lot of fun. Let's this see. this has got to be a Let's lot see, of fun. Let's see. What, what is this? You, I'm glad this, we don't have the computer up, so we have to show that on the screen good, right good. now. It's but, like uh, hold on, it's 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 taking. What is it? Are we in a bunker? I'm not sure. What is? It's not. It's not loading. My hate big studs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's, okay. There you go. <laughs> that that <laughs> is a. Uh, okay. Well, you, you'll have to take my word for right, it. The parent hate sings. Is, okay. This well, is it's not. It's a thing. It's it's just, it it is a. Um, all right, we have gone so far down that particular rabbit trail, mm-hmm. but um, mm-hmm. no, I, I got you. So your mm-hmm. I, your idea was that um, a lot of these events may mm-hmm. uh, un- what's underlying these kinds of things is the sort of I guess unconscious mm-hmm. no- notion as well mm-hmm. that um, there's these unresolved things and they connect to a very mm-hmm. early part of our mm-hmm. our lives and so forth. So that's. Um, that's an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. We have to we have to not regulate mm-hmm. hate. We have to modulate hate. <laughs> and it seems like it happens every mm-hmm. day. There's something that goes wrong. The mm-hmm. driver that pulls in front of you. The yeah, you, you can know, think of all it, of the things that can go wrong during the day. At the zero point of that level of frustration, from the um, the, the 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 bottle or the breast that doesn't arrive on time, and so hunger rises in your stomach in such a way. And remember. From a baby's perspective, the feeling of hunger can feel like a, a tidal wave. It can feel it has the mark of infinity on it. It is not mm. necessarily something that the, the infant can say, well, this will begin and end as soon as I eat. It can literally feel as if you're being assailed from within. Mm-hmm. So if we take that as a zero point, it is, it, it is not too many steps there to the economic disenfranchisement that would fuel um, the racism that drives the KKK. Both mm-hmm. of these are, are frustration, an overwhelming feeling, and um, uh, 
the the negative hate is is a projective solution to that very sense of dysregulation that is inherent in the disenfranchisement. So, right, and and um, it seems that it it will continue too because there's no real stopping this because things uh, others in the group are going to reinforce that mm-hmm. so it becomes a collective kind of idea and then it's on a roll then mm-hmm. you put together one of the hate groups eventually mm-hmm. uh there are so many out out mm-hmm. there i think hundreds now that are mm-hmm. listed by the so many groups like southern poverty uh law center and some other places where you've got a place to go with your hate mm-hmm. if it's at aimed at a particular thing for mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. so um, that's that's kind of scary in some ways too yeah. that we can't do that internally and regulate it mm-hmm. in some way to modulate it internally. well it um, it is it is a an element of the human condition that um, all of us fall prey to um, the reason why Beyond talks about the their positive and negative valences for these sort of basic emotional uh, states is that um, we we in fact it may be necessary to fall into them that um, um, part of what may make um, uh, the um, the reaction formation that occurs with racism sometimes almost as bad as the the direct version of it like we talked about all all Samoans are saints. Right. Um, it, um, um, if, if you don't ho- have the capacity to get lost in your feelings, then you can be stuck in something that, that um, literally whitewashes. To be able to see uh, all Samoans as saints is to not be able to meet them for who they are and where they are. And in, that certainly might be cuddlier and nicer, but it's really just a cuddlier form of fascism than saying that they are, you know, that they all suck. And um, and I guess part of this would be in that, um, you know, Bion has this, this uh, notion that we have to, we have to fall into splitting, so we have to be able to see things often first as part objects before we can see them as whole objects. So we often have to, we often have to have our neighbor distorted to see the worst parts of them, or maybe the only parts we see as good, before we can begin to see them whole. So um, there may be something necessary in this stumbling. So it's if mm-hmm. we suddenly mm-hmm. had a genie and we wished away all hate, maybe we would find ourselves in in um, in a form of stagnation. Maybe there would be no way to meet the other. Maybe the ne- it, hate ha- the necessity of he- ne- necessity of hate is such that the only way we can move forward and really connect is to be able to move through it. Which is what Winnicott thought with a baby. We have to find a way to be able mm. to hate and survive hate so that we can move forward it's it's part of um it's it's part of the movement Mm -hmm. it's very interesting and you know in the news lately there have been this uh, antifa uh Mm -hmm. which is uh Mm -hmm. a group uh, Mm anti-fascist but yet and still in the in you know in these recent days we've seen that group get violent and start Mm -hmm. hitting people and Mm -hmm. dressing in the solid black with the clubs and the whole Mm -hmm. thing and it just it doesn't seem to make sense because that group was started at, at the beginning to be anti mm-hmm. the the racist and white supremacists mm-hmm. and Nazis mm-hmm. and so forth. That but but you can see this like um, um, there is a way in which uh, I can my my political leanings are to the left, so I can often become so enraged at Trump and those who I see that are his supporters that I often miss the message that's being sent to me. So if um, if if you know if forty percent of the nation voted for Trump, there is something they were trying to say in that action, and I need to be able to try to listen to what 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 is that message, mm-hmm. to simply demonize them, to simply call them deplorables, and that may be mm-hmm. the same with Antifa just punching a Nazi in the face. The question we may want to ask: It doesn't mean you got to hug the Nazi. Right. But if there are people around you who have these thoughts and feelings, then, you know, and that's how therapy works. People often come into your office and they have thoughts and feelings that, that are repugnant or just difficult. Sure. Um, there's a famous beyond saying it takes two people to think a dangerous thought. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe racism is a dangerous thought deferred. Instead of the punch, 
Maybe there's a capacity to meet someone where they're at and to be it will help them to be able to think better and make better use of the things in their feeling than this sort of projective, assimilative, sort of racist stuckness that they have. How, how do you connect? Let me ask the question. How do you connect this? We've been talking about hate, but there's also anger, right? So um, hate leads to anger. Mm. Well, what's what's kind of the idea behind that? It seems like mm. one way to take care of your hate is to act out in violence or do mm -hmm. something along those lines. What do you think? Well, you know, there's a famous quote by uh, Heinz Koet that um, 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 that anger is a s assertion stillborn, and that the energy behind anger is meant for assertion. So if we have um, positive forms of hate. We can say, I love you, but I need you to get out of my office because i got to pee. And that's why Beyond said that anytime we set a boundary, you know, for, okay, the hour's up. I know right now you're in some heavy stuff and you're feeling lots of stuff, but this is our ending time. And part of that's because. And mm -hmm. the therapist that is unable to, to set those boundaries that patients continually go over. And so they literally, their entire day becomes sort of out of whack because they continue to extend the frame in such a way. And they go home and kick their dog. Right, comes so, out in right. another way. Right. So if yeah. and we would say that you know just from a pure affect theory perspective, that it generates a level of uh, of um, consistent emotional dysregulation that begs some sort of um, uh, discharge, mm -hmm. and that there is this tension as it builds and it builds and it builds and then, boom, it finds an outlet in kicking the dog. So, yeah, make, it makes sense that it follows in that way. So we need to modulate mm -hmm. this hate, and it's a normal thing. If we haven't used the word normal yet, but uh, we all have this the hate that uh, kind of arrives through our day in various mm -hmm. situations, and we need to do something with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to. We need to be able to. Um, Got to be able to dance with it, right? And that's the difference between regulation and modulation. I know I keep harping on those two points but modulation requires some level of dance it is only through modulation that we have the potential to be able to learn in the true sense so we can learn from experience that's another Bionian term that you know um, and he has a that um, uh, he has a phrase atonement through at one -ment. And, um, okay, that's a little. Uh, <laughs> well, well, it, it's, it, might, it has its sort of echo in the Kabbalah, but the idea yeah. that um, that in the act of of suffering in that sort of modulatory way, we are at one with the context in the experience that we're having. We are not removed from it. We are uh, both participant and observer. So there's a level of atonement. There's a joining and a connection. Um, one of the things that uh, primitive regulatory function does is it it keeps you from having to 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 feel or be connected with right. some of those parts of yourself. There are uh, um, um, primitive regulatory functions can easily keep you from w at one moment with not me states the parts of you that are you but you just don't want to know or that you're not ready to know or that are too much to know at that moment. Right. Um, and we talked before about this notion of um, dyadic and um, um, solitary uh, um, regulation. So, um, you know, we, uh, with really severe dysregulated states, we typically need some sort of dyadic regulation. It's not something we can necessarily do on our own. We need somebody else to help us. It doesn't have right. to be a therapist, but it can right. be family, friend, in those moments we, we have to have a place to be able to bring this. It takes two people to think a dangerous thought. When you're a baby, you're in constant need of dietic regulation. You cannot change your diaper. In fact, uh, um, so, um, but over time you internalize the maternal object in the environment you come in and you mm -hmm. begin to bring it with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think having a friend or a therapist or someone to talk to and bounce some ideas off of. Uh, at the same time, I realized, well, if these groups are becoming more popular and people are joining it, they're, they're getting help from a person mm -hmm. who may not be helping them modulate and mm -hmm. regulate that. They're encouraging it. Mm -hmm. And it becomes, it, it's interesting to me that it just takes up a lot of 
energy and effort to hate. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you have to spend time at hate. Do you wake up in the morning and say, okay, I'm ready to hate again? Uh, well, you know, what, <laughs> what happens well, we, We've that? talked about that. Yeah, I, we've... Uh, and this would be a uh, something to have a, a larger discussion on, but you know, I don't think anybody wakes up when they're a kid, you know, and says, you know, I want to grow up and be the be a racist, the best racist there is. You <laughs> right. know, just like I don't think anybody right. grows up and says, I'm going to be a rapist, I'm going to be the best rapist there ever was, <laughs> right. or the, I'm going to be a meth addict, I'm going to be the best, best meth addict. <laughs> so, in a way, all of these things are um, a failure of sorts, um, a, a combination of, of guilt and tragedy. Um, and uh, to untangle those, um, probably, and we we you know we we're trying to sell to some degree therapy because I got to get that boat. Yeah, I know but, we're still after the boat, but <laughs> but uh, it, it does make, it does make sense that um, wow if, if there's all of this energy that goes out. Uh, time on task, if you mm -hmm. will, kind of supporting and being in the in group, getting reinforcement from so many different people that continues that hate. You often don't have a break in it. This thing's exhausting. Uh, hate is exhausting. Well, you, here's the thing that, that um, and there's a, the theorist um, Jacques Lacan, again, not to be confused with Jacques Lacan. Got it. Um, he taught this notion of Jewissance. In some ways, this is tied to old Freudian notions of drive theory, but he thinks that there is a, a perverse level of enjoyment we have with our symptoms. Okay. So there is something that feels good about hating. If you've ever been in this state where you know the guy per pulls out from under you, out, uh, in front of you, and you're on your way to work, and oh, you're like this, okay. there is an exhilaration. There is, you know, maybe the baby that is screaming at the world because the bottle hasn't arrived yet is finding some to move from that passive state of being at at the whim of your hunger to this raging mini Viking attack on the world. There is. There is some sort of excess enjoyment. There's something you get from that, you know? And so we could say that even though it might be exhausting, maybe it also carries with it a perverse joy. Mm -hmm. um, if you look on the, when you, we had the alt-right folk, um, was it in, was it in Virginia? Where were they at? In North Carolina? Um, Charlotte. Right? Charlotte, that's right. Charlottesville. Charlottesville. Um, Virginia, yes. When they were in Charlottesville, these guys were having fun. They were throwing Nazi salutes, and they were, you know, they were. There is, um, there is an a, a, an orgiistic element to the the sort of and what Lacan would say a Jewissance. There is a, there is a, there's an enjoyment there, and part of untangling, may getting at, you know, and and either finding an outlet or, if nothing else, from Lacan's perspective, it makes it really hard to be able to give up a symptom, mm -hmm. because not only does it cause its own cause. But it also brings with it this this investment. Um, it's drama and tension, violence. They're not boring. That yeah, that that's kind of an interesting way to look at it, and it continues over a period of time. It's almost as if people see that as a solution. If we could only take care of that other side over there, the enemy, mm -hmm. and do something with it, things would be great. If we all thought alike, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, there's some relief in that mm. in some ways. It's a, you know, hate beak. <laughs> um, we, we're going to have to go back in here. Hate beak. Hate beak. It's okay, hate. and the parrot. Well, that took some creativity on their part to uh, to come up with a group. Was that designed at, at one of the big record companies that put that together? I don't, I don't think it was. Uh, these guys at a garage band that said, "Hey, what am what am I going to do not, with this parrot?" Um, I, I, I like know. to think that the um, the parrot put an ad on the newspaper. This is not sorry that this is this is uh, this is SpongeBob. There, here goes Hate Beak. Here we go. We should hear some Hate Beak. Okay. All right, you want to hold it up to the mic a little bit? Here is Hate Beak. That is the third one. Ha, ha. Oh, it is. No, 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 it is the parent. So that is hate. You've feet. really got to work to train the parent to come. The parent to come in on time um, and stay with the beat. But um, I find that interesting. Well, um, I'm not sure we've ever played a metal. 
hate metal on hate metal. Uh, on well, our, the, the, our show here today. You but think of part, of a, part of the the, the the point that art can serve <laughs> is it it allows us a um, uh, uh, to an, a facilitative outlet for affect states that right. we can uh, we have a um, a place for unthought knowns. And there was an interesting study about mm. folks who like heavy metal, particularly as, as kids and growing up, and this notion that some of them would be more violent, they'd do more drugs. Found it to be just the opposite. They were right. less likely to have these sorts of experiences. And they've ever been to a heavy metal concert. Um, it, it, the, the people there are often really nice. And the guy, Gojira guy, at the end of the concert, told everybody how much he loved them and brought his mom out and hugged her on stage. <laughs> so, so there's, Not what you're thinking. <laughs> so there really is this sense of like, you know, that this was a, a ritual experience that allowed people to dance with, maybe expunge or at least dance with, certain affect-intensive states. And maybe, I mean, we, we get that at football games, right? You get sure. it, you know, yeah, the metaphor that you yeah. destroy, you know, yeah. we're going to, you know... Blitzkrieg and all these sorts of stuff. So they're 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 in other places too, I think. Yeah. Well, there, there needs to be a release for this. We have to manage that hate. We all have it. It comes. We have to deal with it in some ways. I think it's a very interesting idea. If you were going, I mean, you you probably get clients that come in and patients that come into your practice and that say. And let it out how much they hate another person. Is that a moment for you as a therapist to say, okay, let's break that down and talk mm -hmm. about it some more in terms of mm -hmm. what they brought up? Well, it depends on – every therapist has their own sort of style. But um, I think you always want to meet someone where they're at. And so um, if someone comes in and they say that they want to die or they hate someone, I think there needs to be a portion of the session to just be that. Let's right. want to die for a while. Let's hate okay. for a while. Right. I think they, they, all of those things are ways for you to be able to, to um, you have to, you want to honor that. Like if you look at the example that I gave with me, you know, I had to for a moment feel that the people around me were better than the people I was sitting next to. You had to, I had to fail in that way to be able to get close enough to the thing that I needed to know. So if someone comes in and they hate, I need to be able to let them hate for a moment or two, and then we can find a way. You know what? You okay. know? And even okay. with what you said, they're like, that sounds, you know, man, it sounds exhausting. Or, you know, this sounds, there's a way to begin to open up the possibility. And with most folks, you can get them to be curious about anything that goes on inside them. If you create the right amount of space, they can mm -hmm. begin enough distance from it to be able to say, what is this? Mm -hmm. What is this thing that I feel? Why is it here? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like our discussion today. You know, the idea of hate, and it's, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, in, the, in the last number of years we've gotten the Internet and everything's mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. constantly feeding us information of news and politics and those mm -hmm. kind of things, um, which uh, can lead to some of those reactions that may formulate move on to, to hate but you have to look inside about why mm -hmm. is that experience it a little bit mm -hmm. feel it and then try to figure out what you need to do next and i might want to say that those folks who can look toward um uh the folks who are marching in in charlottesville and if if they can if all that that it generates in them is a feeling of contempt and they may want to ask themselves, they may be in a place of hate. They may be projecting something and splitting in such a way that there's something for them to learn that they haven't been able to dance with. That it may beg for a modulative um, response, one that, that, that they may need to... Um, it, is, it is easy to be caught in this negative hate without even knowing it. So... All right, all right. So, how are you feeling right now? You have any hate you're dealing with? I got um, any any kind I gotta of go thing and we can some help hate out? Beak. I'm gonna crank up some hate beak. Hate and, uh, beak. Some hate beak. You know, if this thing catches on, mm -hmm. you could you could help the band uh, help the with hate, this kind of thing. Some hate you know? Beak. Yes. Could, uh, <laughs> huh. Did they play in Atlanta? Is that what you? Uh, they were on tour. They have. They, they play live. So there is. Um, you know, I don't know um, what the parrot does in the. Force in what a does full the parrot do? 
<laughs> up, uh, up on stage, but apparently, the, you know, the, the parents um, on stage is the front man. Okay. Mm. Well, all right. Think we uh, things we learn by just watching this podcast. Okay. Mm. All right, my friend. Hope everything goes well for you. Let's stop there. I'll see you next time. Next time. <laughs>